Welcome to my tutorial on foundation paper piecing with directional fabrics. If you need a refresher on how to do the freezer paper method of foundation paper piecing, make sure to check out that video before you start this video so that you understand the technique that I'm using here. If you've done foundation paper piecing traditionally before, it's actually pretty exciting and fun to use freezer paper, so I highly suggest that you check it out. Check out the description below for that link and to see other great and related tutorials. As we get started, your supplies are going to be just the same as usual. There's nothing extra here, just the freezer paper, your template, and if you'd like, an add a quarter ruler. I'm going to be using my Cricut light box to help you see what we're doing and it's a great tool but not necessary. A window works just as well. So to get started we're going to get everything set up just like we normally would for any foundation paper pieced block. I'm going to trace all of my lines onto my freezer paper like you saw in the previous video. And when you're doing directional foundation paper piecing, you want to make sure that you cut straight lines on that dotted line, the seam allowance line, because you'll be using this to keep your pieces straight and your directional fabrics in the correct orientation. So now I will be pre-folding all of these lines just like we do for the regular foundation paper piecing method. Just like always, we're gonna do that tricky first piece by putting the right side down and then placing our template on top, shiny side down, making sure that there's a quarter to a half an inch all the way around our template lines. We'll iron this on so that it stays in place and then we can get started on those tricky angles with directional fabrics. Now before we get to the part of the video that you're all here for, I highly suggest practicing this technique on scrap fabric first, and I also suggest watching through the rest of this video first so that you have a better understanding of how it works and why it works. Now back to what you already have done. You've already got piece one and are ready to work on piece two. We're going to fold our template back along the pre-folded line. So your fabric should be stuck onto shape one and it should be sticking out where shape two is. I'm using my add a quarter ruler to trim my seam allowance down to a quarter of an inch. You can do this with any ruler, but I really like the add a quarter because it has this little ledge that just sits against the paper so I don't really have to look and figure it out. I just can pop it right on there and trim. Now, that was the very easy part, and I want you to stick with me here and trust me on this, because we are about to figure out how to get this directional fabric to be both straight and facing the right direction. So take your piece, make sure it's larger, definitely a half inch larger on all sides of shape number two, and face it in the correct direction. Make sure things are lined up on your mat to be straight. We're gonna use that as our guide. We're gonna take our template and we are going to turn it backwards and upside down. Now remember, everything needs to stay straight in the lines on your mat. So the top line of our template also needs to stay straight as well. This is where we're gonna cut the angle to match the template. So a good way to remember what the order of operations is, is first you cut that first seam allowance and now you're going to cut along the same raw edge to get the second seam allowance. Once you've made that cut, you can turn your template back the correct way, line up the raw edges that you just cut. At this point I like to check, so I will put my quarter inch ruler on top fold it back and make sure that the direction and the angles are all correct. Now that we're sure everything is cut correctly and will line up when we stitch, we're just going to sew right along that edge, uh, just like we normally would for foundation paper piecing with the freezer paper. 
Now you can also use this technique for traditional foundation paper piecing. I prefer the method using freezer paper because then there's no ripping. If you need a tutorial on how that technique works, you can click on the link below in the description. Um, in this tutorial though, I'm just showing you how to work with the directional fabrics. I'm not showing you how to do the foundation paper piecing itself. So again, if you need that tutorial, click in the link below. After stitching, we are going to iron this piece open and I'm going to show you on the other side how this works just so you can see it in the opposite direction and we can have some more practice with this rather confusing technique. So to get our stuff all set, we're going to grab our third piece of fabric. So this is in this case the same as piece two. Uh, we did one and two and now we're doing between one and three. So we're going to fold along those pre-folded lines. Again, piece one will be a little stuck to piece three, that's fine. Just peel it off and fold along the line between one and three. We're going to trim for the quarter inch seam. We're going to grab the fabric for piece number three, line it up on our mat so that it is straight along the lines. Take our template and turn it backwards and then upside down. And now you'll see this is opposite of last time because the angle is different. We're using that top edge along one of the straight lines on our mat to get the angle correct. And keep in mind, it gets a little confusing to figure out which part of your template you're aligning with the grid on your mat. You want to align the main part of the template. So the piece that is not folded back is what you're keeping aligned with the grid on your mat. Now we're gonna take our template and turn it the correct usual way that we're used to. Line it up along the cut edge, check to make sure everything's correct, and then we're gonna go ahead and stitch again. Now all that's left to do is iron it and enjoy the sweet victory that is foundation paper piecing with directional fabric. Again, this is going to take a couple tries for you to get. There's so much to think about and figure. That's why I always like to check before I stitch, but it's really satisfying once you get it down after a couple of tries um, because everything just looks so clean. The rest of the block is just traditional. There's nothing directional or fancy about it. So I'm going to zoom through um, four, five, six, and seven and tell you more about my block of the month program while I'm doing it. Now this block is from my block of the month program called Potting Table. And this is a skill building program. So I will be showing you fun things like how to do curved piecing, how to do bias tape applique, a little embroidery if you'd like, invisible machine applique, and of course foundation paper piecing. To create this quilt for yourself, you can find the pattern at www.rachelrossi.design slash BOM. This is where you'll find all of my block of the month patterns. You'll be able to join and become a member and have lifetime access to all of these great tutorials and exclusive member content. If you prefer visual learning or are a newer quilter that wants to watch how I do each of the steps, you can also add on a video class. These are pre-recorded classes that walk you through every single step of every pattern every month. For more information, you can use the link below or visit www.rachelrossi.design.bom.